everybody, it's Tyler here with Behind the Bumpers. I'm checking out team number 2202 Beast Robotics coming out of Brookfield, Wisconsin. We're here with uh, Zane, Dustin, and Sarah. We'll be talking more about this robot. This team won chairmans last year for their first time, so up trending there. A couple of EI awards. They have a couple of regional wins under their belt. And this is their 2020 robot that's been modified for the 2021 season. A lot of cool modifications here, some neat automation, a replacement of the shuffleboard, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Zane, we're gonna be starting out with the intake on this robot. Uh, I suppose we go through, we'll kind of follow that power cell journey. A couple modifications to the intake, but let's just le learn more about it and we'll kind of keep going on through the robot. All right, yeah, so this is the intake of our robot and it works by having um, two sets of rollers all powered by a single motor um, and they turn and pull in the power cells right over the bumper and we wanted them to be over the bumper to make the intake as wide as possible. Um, and for our 2021 season, we narrowed the intake at the top to funnel the power cells into one lane in the magazine uh, because now in the 2021 challenges, we only use one power, three power cells instead of five. So here we can see this work. And also we have automation on our intake to um, evenly space the power cells inside of the magazine here. So as we go into the magazine, which will be our next thing, I know this is really where the heavy modification has come from, but uh, talk to me a little about uh, with the drop down intake. Uh, was this your first idea uh, that you had for an intake or can you maybe talk about some of the different uh, ideas and iterations you went through? Yeah, we had a couple of different ideas for the intake. One of them being something that would be between the bumpers. We wanted the intake to be as wide as possible so we could intake power cells from a range of places around the robot. And uh, so we had, a uh, slimmer intake or uh, something that didn't even fold down was just completely contained inside of the robot. But we uh, wound up with this and it's actuated by these pneumatic cylinders and it can actually fold up into the frame perimeter of the robot. Let's see that actually up. Uh, let's see it come up and come back down just so we can get a little bit of a demonstration on that. So this is the way that the robot starts in the match, right? And yep. then it comes back down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it gets in position. So we're going to be going into the uh, magazine uh, next year, Zane. You're going to be continuing with that. And I know uh, that you definitely did some modifications because I only see three power cells uh, being held in this. And you are telling me before that it was five. So talk to me more about the modifications that happened, uh, specifically for 2021, where you can only hold three power cells. Yeah, so since we only have three power cells, we wanted them to be in a single line all the way up in the magazine. And another thing that would happen with the five power cells is that these yellow urethane belts, they would jump off the pulleys and then we wouldn't be able to pull the power cells up through the magazine. So by condensing it down to one lane, they don't move side to side and they don't make the belts jump off the pulleys and we can get a straight consistent line right out of the shooter. So uh, one of the things we see a lot of teams are using different types, you know, poly belts and that sort of thing uh, on the road. Can you talk to me about uh, any ways that you try to mitigate any jamming issues in your magazine? Um, yeah, I'd say the main way that we tried to mitigate the jamming is through our um, light gate here, which automates it so they're always evenly spaced um, so that they, the power cells don't ride up on each other and they're, and they're always distance between them. Yeah, and it, it looks like, were, were these pieces that were right here just kind of funnel in, were these added on afterwards, I would assume? Yes, these were added for the 2021 season to help keep the power cells in the center of the magazine. Sure. Um, so uh, as we kind of keep going on through this journey, we're going to be bringing Dustin in here. He's going to be talking about the uh, shooter uh, on the robot. And then also uh, kind of a cool way that you modified what was your climber uh, now for the uh, shooter as well. Talk to me more about that, Dustin. Right. So first off, we actually condensed our shooter down to this center barrel here. Uh, originally, we had them evenly spaced across the wheel so that we could shoot two power cells at a time. 
But with uh, the Interstellar Accuracy Challenge, we wanted to get them all cl as close together as possible so that we could spin them up faster, as well as get a more consistent shot between the different power cells. Another thing we changed is we actually went to these two and a half inch wheels. Uh, so that way, because we were getting a little bit too much compression when we had four inch wheels on both sides, and it would cause the power cell to either go left or right. And this, uh, we found that limiting the diameter actually reduced the left-right movement of the power cells after it's been shot from the magazine. Do you know what the, uh, the, the speed difference is between uh, the motors attached to this versus this? Like how much faster is one spinning versus the other? Um, so we have a three to one gear ratio for the lower and for the one up here we have a five to one. And I believe uh, this one roughly spins at 1,800 and this one spins around 3,000. Okay, um, and then uh, coming through, how long does it take for your shooter to get back up to speed before you shoot another one? Is it pretty much, you can just fire them all straight through or how does that work? Uh, there's a little bit delay between, but uh, one thing that really helps that gives the shooter wheels the time is the spacing. So it really doesn't have to stop the magazine too much. Sure, too that long. makes a lot of sense. And uh, talk to me then about uh, this, uh, ratchet that you have down here. This yeah. used to be your climber, and now you're using the modify the angle on your shooter. Tell me more Correct. about that. So originally we had uh, pistons, so it would be pushing the magazine up. Instead, we swapped them out for gas springs here. So now we are pulling our, uh, we're pulling our angle down using the climber motor here. Uh, we kept the same gear, gear ratio, and it was at, in the exact same spot that it was last year. We're just using this strap attached down here to the chassis to really pull it down. Uh, to check our angle, we added this string pot here, so that way uh, we take this current, this height here, and we plug it into an equation to get what angle we are at. Can we see a couple power cells actually shot through? I'd love to see that the delay between it, maybe some of the angle adjustments as well too. So not too much of a delay, like you said on that. I'd uh, really like to, to see those demos for that. So uh, Sarah, we're gonna be going over to you next and talking about uh, any of the automation that maybe wasn't talked about in the robot that you wanna cover. And then I know we're gonna be showing off a web interface, which is a shuffleboard replacement as well. Okay, sure. Um, first, I'll just kind of uh, go over what Zay mentioned as well about um, the automation on the intake. So we do have uh, light brake sensors on the intake. So um, that when there is a power cell between the intake and the magazine, we can automate the magazine, we um, automatically turn the magazine on so that uh, it creates enough space between each ball. Um, and yeah, as was mentioned before, we also, um, we have a closed loop velocity controlled shooter and, um, and we do wait between each power cell that we shoot so that the, um, ro ro the RPMs go um, back up to speed. Sure. And yeah, for the web interface that we created, um, yeah, we noticed that smart dashboard, or sorry, shuffleboard had been a little slow and it was crashing a lot and it was kind of difficult to debug things when um, we couldn't get very reliable data. So using FRC web components, we created a web interface and so the, First of all, we have a debug tab and it has all of the data that we need and it's a lot more reliable than um, the um, shuffleboard. And we also have a, uh, a, a field view um, with each of the auto nav paths um, on it and we can see where the robot is on the field and if it's um, following the path correctly. And we also, using the light brake sensor, we're able to tell how many balls are in the magazine. So we do have a feature um, with um, the number of balls in the magazine and as well as cameras, and we can run commands from this website. So yeah, overall, it's just been a lot more um, reliable than Smart Dashboard. So Sarah, I do wanna ask you a follow-up question in regards yeah. to the uh, adjustment that was made from the climber going to the shooter. Uh, so obviously, you know, it looks like you can pretty much adjust at any angle you want. If we can show that kind of moving a little bit too. Uh, but how many different pre-programmed uh, areas do you have on the adjustments? Um, I, b 
I believe we have four pre-programmed areas on the d adjustments for the um, interstellar accuracy challenge. Sure. Well, 2202 Beast Robotics, thanks for taking the time to speak with us about your modified 2020 robot. Uh, really looking at tackling the 2021 at-home challenge as well. I uh, love to see all the different systems uh, that you're implementing and uh, thanks for taking the time to speak with us. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.